Previously on Scrap Computing, we tried to restore an Asus P5A. We made our own inductors, we repaired the broken traces, but VCC3 was not showing any voltage, so we replaced the voltage controller, to later realize that it was working fine all along. We removed the mysterious transistor, which seemed to fix the VCC3 issue. Hi and welcome to the video! So this is the second part of the ASUS P5A repair video. Let's start where we left off, by trying to figure out what was going on with that mysterious transistor. As a reminder, it used to pull down the soft start pin of the PWM controller, turning it off. But I couldn't figure out what was driving this transistor and why. I spent some time following the traces on the board. It turns out that the transistor is controlled by the 7407 buffer chip next to the battery holder, and the input to the buffer is the CPU's VCC2DT pin. As its name suggests, it is the VCC2 detect pin, which helps the motherboards detect dual voltage CPUs. This pin is set to ground by a dual voltage CPU like the Pentium MMX, and is internally not connected in all their single voltage CPUs. Yeah, this is embarrassing. It turns out, VCC3 will only be enabled if a dual voltage CPU is inserted into the socket, and I was doing all my tests with the CPU removed. This makes sense, because in single voltage CPUs, there are no separate VCC2 and VCC3 pins, but rather a single VCC rail that shorts all these pins internally. So if the VCC3 power circuit was also enabled while VCC2 was already on, its output would be shorted with the output of the VCC2 circuit, which is not a good idea. So yeah, I wasted a lot of time looking into an issue that wasn't there in the first place. But anyway, you live and learn. So let's resolder the transistor. And let's emulate a dual voltage CPU by grounding the VCC2 detect pin with a small cable. One side of the cable goes into one of the VSS pins, and the other into VCC2 detect. And yeah, VCC3 is now 3.55 volts. Now let's check with an actual CPU. And yeah, it works, it's showing postcodes. Now let's fix this part of the motherboard with the missing IC. According to the markings on the seal screen, the missing component is a 78L05, which is a 5V regulator. Some pads are missing though. The bottom left pad is not used by the chip, so we are good. But the top right is the input, so we need to fix it. But wait a second, it looks like this mangled mess on the left pad of the capacitor is the missing pad. Let me try to unfold it. The copper tray seems to be twisted, so let me untwist it. Yeah, it came off. Anyway, we will fix it with a bodge wire.
Now let's try to fix the ISA slot. This pin is twisted, so let me try to twist it back. A couple of plastic pieces have been broken off, so let's try to fix them with some super glue. Using a clamp to press the parts together seems to work great. Ok, now let's try to fix the socket's broken mount. I'm going to try to fix it with super glue using some white tack as a mold. Adding baking soda to super glue makes it set instantly, so let's give it a try. Yeah, the result is pretty bad. Ok, let me try again, but this time let's not add baking soda. And yeah, a couple of hours later, the super glue has set, and it doesn't look too bad. I'm not sure whether this provides any structural strength, but at least it looks a bit nicer. Now let's add the missing USB ports. Ok, now let's run some software. I tried installing the ESS audio chip drivers using some files I found online, but I was getting the cannot find the audio drive error. But luckily I found a post on Vogons by user CDE under the thread ESS1938 under DOS. It not only contains instructions about how to install the driver correctly, but also includes the drivers in zip files. I followed the instructions about the DOS installation, and now my sound card gets detected just fine. Ok, let's try some games.
In Minecraft Island 2, I had to specify the sound card by hand using the S argument. Okay, that's all for now. I'm quite pleased with how this board turned out. It seems to be working alright, and it's going to make a great DOS, Windows 95 or 98 gaming PC. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks for watching and goodbye.